everybody, it's Erica and welcome back to the Sinclair Patterns Valley Skater Dress Sew Along. Today we're actually going to start sewing the dress. So if you're here, that means you've pre-washed fabric, laid it out, cut it out, marked all your markings on your pattern, and you're ready to start sewing. Also, make sure that you have some way of looking at the tutorial that uh, Sinclair Patterns puts out with this free pattern. I'll put a link down below to the pattern just in case you don't have it yet. And also to the first steps, this will all be in a playlist. But what I'm talking about is the Valley Skater Dress directions and tutorial. So that's got all your sizes and it's got all your information. So First step in the tutorial is to stabilize and finish your shoulder seams. This is not something I always do, but I will be doing here today. Also, this dress can be entirely sewn on your home sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. I um, would usually sew this on my serger, but for those of you who don't have a serger, I'll be showing how to do it on a home machine. So, stabilize shoulder seams. What does that mean? So, take your back of your bodice and these are your shoulders. The whole weight of the skirt and the bodice is on those shoulder seams and they're pretty small. So what I did is I used a little bit of this sort of mesh. This is what it looks like. It's a mesh strip that has no give. It does not stretch. And I just put a little bit of that at my shoulder seams on the wrong side of the fabric in the back and I attach that with a large zigzag basting stitch. It's about a four in width on my machine. And that usually gives me pretty good stability on one set of my pocket openings. So if you're going to be using pockets, you might want to stabilize where they go in and sew into the dress. All right, so now that we have go your machine, or iron on interfacing or do whatever you're going to do to stabilize those seams. So the next thing we need to do on the dress is to pin together and sew our side seam, our uh, bodice shoulder seams, the seams we just reinforced. So I'll be using wonder clips to clip everything together, but you can use pens or whatever you have, whatever your preferred method is. So. I'm laying down my bodice right side up and I'm taking my bodice front piece and laying that right sides together. And now I'm going to just go to the machine and sew this together. Okay, so there's my sewing machine. It's a Brother SM2700. It is a very inexpensive machine, but it does a great job. And I'm going to be sewing my shoulder seams together. I've got a, a, a length of 1.5, which is going to give me a nice zero, narrow zigzag is what we want to use. And I've got a 2 on my width of my zigzag. And sew my shoulder seams together and back stitch at the beginning and ending of both. Okay, so this is our neck of our top. So now we need the neck band. So it's gonna be this long, skinny rectangle. And what we wanna do, and I'm not gonna actually move the camera and show you guys this part. We want to just sew together the short ends to make a loop. There's our sewn together ends. And here is our loop turned right side out. Now that we've got a loop, we want to fold it in half so the long sides are together and get that folded all the way around. Depending on what type of fabric you're using, you may have more or less success trying to 
iron all this in place. So once you have that folded over, match up where you put your seam and fold it like that. Do you see how the seam's here and then this is the unseamed side? This is half, this is the exact half of my piece from my seam. You can fold it again just to really check it and make sure it's exactly in half because we're gonna be quartering this. So I'm gonna put a clip here at that top area, which is, that's my back with the seam, that's my front. And then I've got on each corner, I'm gonna mark that. Okay, so now we need to transfer that to the top. I marked my center front and center back in yellow chalk. And I'm gonna put a pen through that chalk mark in the front and the back. So that's that marked. Now I'm going to take and bring it over so it's folded at those pins and fold that flat. And then I'm just gonna fold that again. So it's kind of folded over like this. There are easier ways to find quarter marks and definitely do it the way that's most comfortable for you. This is one of the ways I do it. Okay, open everything back up to the right sides. Look at your pattern and figure out which side's the back. The back is higher than the front. And I did the scoop neck, so that's more obvious. It's a little harder to tell that on a boat neck, so you may want to indicate that in some way when you're actually cutting out the pattern. So I'm going to match up my back seam with that back pin. So the seam goes onto the pin, and I'm going to put a clip right there want to scoot that over just a little. There we go. That clip should be in the middle. So now I'm going to bring that down to my pin in the front and clip that in place. And I am not like the queen of sewing neck bands, but I have done it several times and all these little pinning and points make it a lot easier for me to do. So now that we've got that on there, remember it's a neck band. You're going to have to stretch it to fit but you don't want to be stretching it too much. So just make sure you use the right neckband for your size and for the view that you've chosen. Okay, so I've got that clipped. I'm gonna sew this on the machine, and then once I know I like my neckband, I'm gonna actually run it through the serger. You don't have to do this, but if you have a serger, it just gives a nice cleaner look. Okay. So we're just gonna start sewing around the neck band, making sure we get the folded over band, which is two layers, and then the one layer of the dress itself. And stretch that neck band very gently to fit onto the dress. Here we go. Oh, I do not backstitch at the beginning. I just start sewing, and then I will just sew over the line at the beginning when I get to the end. Okay, I'm back. I have sewn my neck band and I actually went back in and surged the seam allowance. So, so the surge the seam allowance. You don't have to do that on yours, but I just think it makes a very neat look. This is my favorite way of doing sleeves is in the flat like this. I don't like sewing in sleeves in the round and knits. I don't think it's necessary and it's a complication I don't need. <laughs> so here is my front, here's my back, here's my sleeve. Now I marked my sleeve with chalk. I thought I did. When I cut it out, yes. Okay, so I've got two chalk marks in the back and one in the front. So I am just going to lay this out accordingly. So we want to do right sides together and we want to have 
the back of the sleeve going to the back of the dress. You can do the zigzag stitch on this. You want to have a nice small zigzag, one and a half by two or one and a half by one and a half, whichever works better for you. I am going to serge my sleeves. So we have a quarter inch seam allowance, which might seem really small if you're used to the seam allowance that's used for like um, ready to wear that is woven. It's usually five eighths for home machine sewing. Okay, we have sleeves sewn in. Let me orient this in such a way where it looks like, and there we go. So now we've got neckband and sleeves done. Yay! So there's that. Now we want to finish the side seams. So I'm going to flip it right sides together. I'm going to line up my bottom edges. Put a clip. I'm going to line up the seam for the sleeve. That underarm seam is what I'm talking about. Line up the edges of the sleeve. And then I've got this rather short midsection, and I'm just going to put a clip in there as well. So after we've got that all done, we will go and sew on the sewing machine or serge the side seams together. And this sews the sleeve and the side seam in one continuous line. There we go. That should be able to show you the serger. And then we're just going to serge both side seams and that under arm sleeve seam at the same time. Four inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's it done on the serger. You could also, like I said, do it on the sewing machine. But this, my friends, is your bodice. Easy peasy. We will at the end have to hem those sleeves. But yeah, I know it looks really short. Remember, there's a waistband that goes in. So now we've got the waistband. I've got a contrasting one for the outside and I've got a one that matches the dress for the inside. So what we're going to need to do to prepare this is sew the short ends of this waistband, both waistbands, just like we sewed the short ends of the neckband. So we're just going to do that now. I'm going to do mine on the serger. You can do it on the sewing machine with a narrow zigzag. Okay, so now we've done that. So now we need to attach these bands to the bottom of the bodice. The inner waistband is going to go on the inside of the bodice and the outer waistband is going to go on the outer. Now let's start it inside out first. I want when I'm wearing the dress, the waistband on the inside of the dress to show the pretty side. So I don't want to sew this right sides together. I want to sew it so it is wrong side to right side, wrong side of the dress to right side of the band. So when I turn the dress around, the bodice is showing the wrong side 
and the band is showing the right side. I want to attach the waist, the, the short end seam to the waist seam, not the waist seam, the side seam to the side seam. There's only one seam in that waistband, so I want to quarter it, I want to half it first, and mark that with my pen, and that pen marked half is going to go down and hit the other side seam of my dress. And now we just want to make sure that it fits all the way around the rest. If we used proper seam allowances, we should be okay. And it's a knit fabric, so if we have to make it work a little bit, it's not the end of the world. And then we want to get it to match up over here. All right, that's done. Now we want to turn it right side out, like so. Okay, and now we want to lay down the good waistband, the outside waistband. In my case, it's a contrast navy blue, and we want to do that the same way. So we want to find the half point and mark that. And this is done like a regular waistband. So it's just right sides together. And now we're clipping through all three of those layers. I'm sorry, this is not the most clear. It's one of the weirdest things to do, to tell you how to do, but it's really easy to actually to do, and the directions are very clear. So, uh, now you've got choices here. You can just baste this all around, which is what I'm gonna do, and then sew it a second time with like a narrower stitch. You could sew it the second time with the serger. Whatever you are most comfortable to do. But the double waistband gives you a nice finished inside of the garment. But because this is kind of an important step, I'm going to baste it in to make sure there's no surprises. And then go back through the second time and serge it. That also makes sure that you're catching everything because you don't want to only have sewn the inner waistband or the outer waistband and missed one of these layers since there's three layers. This is definitely the point where having a medium weight to lightweight fabric really comes in handy because there's some bulk there. I'm doing a big zigzag to get this basted down. Make sure you've got all three layers under that presser foot. We did just fine. I'm going to flatten those layers, but what I'm looking for is yeah, look, so when that opens out, we've got the good side on the outside. So we don't want to open this completely because I'm going to go through and serge this now since this waist seam takes a little bit of, a little bit of tension because the dress is hanging from the shoulders, then to this point, then the skirt's hanging from this. So we want this to be a little, a little tough. Try not to stretch your waistband when you're sewing. Just let it slide through the machine. All right, let's figure out how we're gonna attach this to the skirt because once we do that, then we hem the sleeves and the skirt and we're done. I find it personally easier to start treating this as one piece instead of two waistbands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna baste the two waistbands together as one. So I'm just gonna 
clip them together, make sure the under waistband is flat and fold it out. The serger gives a nice finished seam on the inside that's not too thick, but if you used the um, sewing machine for that, it'll be an even thinner seam, so it'll be really easy to flip it out. This is not in the pattern directions, but it made it easier for me. I did it when I made the peplum version and I was happy. Basically, the less layers of separate stuff that I'm dealing with, the better. For me, I want to always be sewing as much as possible one piece of fabric to one other piece of fabric. Okay, so that's done. So now I just have to sew the bodice at the waistband to the skirt. And then um, I'll just unpick any of the basting stitches that happen to show at the end. Okay, we're back and we're doing the skirt. I'm going to be doing this in a little bit of a different order than the pattern tells you to. They want you to do the pocket bags to sew onto the side seam first, but I want to do my darts first, uh, not darts, pleats first. So what you want to do is you want to fold your skirt, and I'm going to put a pen in them so you can really see them. I have marked on my pattern where my two lines are for my pleat. So now I'm just going to bring those two lines together and match them up. And then, oh, I also marked how long the lines were. So I want to make sure that I don't sew too far down on these pleats. I don't want my pleats to be too long. Play with that a little bit. There's a guideline on the pattern, but you can also make your pleats a little longer or a little shorter based on how much width you want um, in the fullness of the skirt. So I am going to go to the machine and I'm going to sew down that line that we marked till probably about two inches down. Okay, so now I'm back. I have sewn like so. Now, you've got this flap here, right? I'm going to, which is the back of the pleat, I'm going to open the pleat up. I'm going to put my fingers in it to sort of flatten it with my hand. So here's the pleat. So the wrong side of the fabric, I'm just going to put my fingers in it and flatten it down, kind of open it up. and then lay it flat on the wrong side of the fabric at the waistline and I'm going to pin it in place. And we are going to baste over that pleat so that it stays. But what I will do right now is show you guys what it looks like on the front. So see? Got this nice little pleat. So on the back side, we're just going to sew over that area to keep that pleat flat. I'm using a basting stitch, so I'm using a straight stitch on the machine in the three width and the three length, and that is within the seam allowance for the skirt. And there's my line of basting stitches, and there's my cute pleat on the front. You're gonna do that on the other side of the front, and you're also gonna do it on the skirt back. These skirts are exactly the same on the front and the back. What I will show you guys really quick is the pocket. So you're going to lay your skirt down and there's your side seam. And I have a mark here that's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but it's where I wanna put my pocket. And I'm just gonna lay my pocket down. There's a straight edge on the pocket and there's a curved edge. The curved edge goes in to the skirt and the straight edge lines up with your side seam of your skirt and you just want to sew down that and I use a zigzag at our normal zigzag length so the one and a half and the two and I'm just going to sew that down and then I'll come back after I finish the whole of the skirts and show you guys the next step. Okay so we're over here, <clears throat> excuse me folks, <clears throat> 
dry today. All right, we're at the serger. In fact, I'm gonna have some water. Ha, <laughs> <sighs> stay hydrated. I'm keeping my beams facing towards the inside of the drawer. So away from the pocket. This doesn't matter too much. It's just what I choose to do. Okay, so now that's sewn. So let's say we want to reinforce these pockets. I'm gonna go where the, here's the skirt, here's the pocket. I'm going to go through and just stitch over with a zigzag and back stitch right where the pocket meets the skirt. Okay, so that is just an extra step you don't have to take. Um, I don't use my pockets a ton, but I still do that just in case. So now we've got a skirt. Pretty cute skirt, pretty heavy skirt actually in this double brush poly. So we're gonna go over and I'm gonna show you guys the next step. So I'm gonna put the bodice of the dress inside the skirt, the skirts facing wrong side up, the bodice is right side up, and I'm putting it in the skirt. And by doing this, the right sides are together in there. So, match my side seam to my side seam. So that's all clipped together. So now I'm just gonna sew that seam. Okay, so I have gone over this and in some areas, this gets a little heavy and bulky because of those pleats. So even though I trust my serger, I am gonna go back over the whole seam with a two and two zigzag stitch because I want that waist seam to be nice and strong. Again, optional. Depends on the weight of your fabric, but this fabric is pretty heavy. <laughs> You just have to try it on, decide on how much hem allowance you need, how much hem you want, decide um, how much hem you want on your sleeve, just turn those up, hem them in your preferred way, and we've got a dress. Yay! Thank you guys so much for being part of this. I will do my finishing off camera. And the next time I see you, we'll all be talking with our new dresses on. Bye. Hi everybody, we've got our finished dress. I'm gonna stand on a chair so you can actually see it. Oh, there we go. Got this cute waistband. I like the scoop neck. I did the short little cap sleeve. I've got my pockets. Got my cute little pleats. Ah, I'm very pleased with this dress. Um, I did the petite uh, dress size and it's hitting me right below the knee, which I love. So yeah, I really like how my contrast band came out. 
Thank you guys so much for being here and being part of this and making this dress with me. I really enjoyed it. I hope that you guys had a great time. Um, please, if you make a valley skater dress and you are part of this sew along, please um, go and tag me on Instagram. I'm Dizzy Knits and Curls on there. You can also find me um, at the so a vintage style dress community, which I'll put a link to down below. It's a Facebook group that I help to moderate along with two other wonderful ladies. And we make vintage style dresses. And what I mean by that is anything before 1980, that's our vintage cutoff. So whether you're into Edwardian or flappers or Marilyn Monroe style 50s or, you know, 70s disco, we, we are here for you to be a community and a resource and we can talk about all things vintage dresses. So thank you guys. This has been the Sinclair Valley Skater Dress Sew Along and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!